They're great, aren't they? They do great. Kind of hard to follow that up. How are you happy? Okay, great, 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 great. Amen. sing up here with all you folks staring at me I'm delighted to have my my uh, cousin Gilbert Lopez here today stand up man this is my cousin Gilbert Lopez and uh, he's related to Gabriel Lopez this is your uh, cousin yeah because over there is Gabriel Lopez yeah, that's that's uh, my uh, well, his uh, his grandfather is his uncle. So, yeah, praise God. So here, the family here, and 
<clears throat> and then there's the Ricos over here too, viejo. The Ricos, Juan Antonio Rico. Yeah, Ray and Kelly. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so praise God. Uh, my, my cousin here has been just one crazy guy. But anyway, uh, he's all right. He's all right. He's all right. And I've known him for oh, a long time. And uh, I thank God for <clears throat> his uh, grandma, Matia Candelaria, and uh, his uh, father, Freddy Lopez, and the whole family. And I thank God, fruit of, of, of my father's uh, planting the seed in the neighborhood and among the, the relatives. Amen. God is faithful, isn't he? Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Don't forget to come back tonight. I promise to do a little bit better. But we have a wonderful program tonight, believe me. And you'll enjoy it. It's very simple, and, uh, but it's going to bless you. So invite somebody, don't come alone, bring somebody with you. I want to talk to you this morning about what in the world happened. <laughs> Go to Psalm chapter 37 with me. <laughs> now you'll see why I'm saying that. I'm asking that question. Psalm 37, come on. Go with you in your Bibles <clears throat> or in your electronic media, wherever you're at. By the way, don't forget to tell your friends we're on YouTube and we're also streaming live right now. So I got a, a wonderful well, message from Brother Quintero, Jesse Quintero down the border. He said he hurt his foot and had surgery. And then there he is sitting down, laying down on his couch with his foot like that. And he's watching me on television. <laughs> he said, this is great. But he called me to huh? David Quintero. I said, Jesse, okay, I'm sorry. Anyway, so he said, it's going to be a few more weeks like this, Pastor. I go, well, that's wonderful. But last week, you know, I was talking about how these uh, uh, pastors and people, you know, are into um, money and what have you. And uh, he sent me a, a little text on how this one pastor of a mega church was cheered and lauded because he gave his wife a 200,000 Lamborghini. <clears throat> wow, you married the wrong guy. Hmm? No, that was not, no, no. Anyway, then I got a letter from, a card from Tanya, I don't know who she is, but um, she said that um, we're doing good, and I guess she's listening or whatever. I don't know. But anyway, good things. People are watching and people are looking. At. And we're so delighted to have you and welcome you this morning. And Maria, I'm glad you came and brought a friend. God bless you too. Your husband. See, si. Well, congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Que bueno. Que bueno. Felicidades. Praise God. So again, don't forget. Are you in Psalm 37, verse 1? Yes. Okay. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. Like the grass, iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do what? Good. So shall thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit your, commit your way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgments in the noonday. Well, I'm talking about what in the world happened. An Italian proverb says, he who would have no trouble in this world must not be born in it. Why is the world in the mess it's in? 
Can man ever find a solution to his problems? My friends, the world is a mess, but it is uh, in a mess as a direct result of men's sin and disobedience to his creator. If we would do things the way God has said, we'd have not that many problems, folks. Are you hearing me? Because, you know, most of the problems, we cause them. Hello? God did not create the problems we see today. When God made the world, it was very good. Isn't that true? Furthermore, God created a perfect man and placed him in a perfect environment. But it's tragic to see what man has done with God's wonderful creation. It is common to see today children, as well as adults, dying of incurable diseases. Isn't that true? It breaks my heart when they put the little kids, I know they do it to draw funds for their particular programs, but it's sad to see children suffering. People dying of leukemia, cancer, AIDS, and on and on. And often we can see and hear weeping and crying because of the loss of a loved one. People die every day. People are plunged into eternity every day. The earth has been soaked with human blood from the very days of Abel back in the beginning. So the world today is filled with madness. But none of this was in God's original plan for mankind. All of these terrible things are in consequence to man's disobedience. You know, I've been to court many times for other people. Of course, I had my share when I was a young man. But now when I go, I see that people could avoid those problems, avoid paying those big fines and all of that if they would just obey God. I talked to Joey last night on the phone. He told me he got two years of prison time. And I prayed with him over the phone and, and told him to be good, do a good program, stay close to the chaplain, go to church, whatever he can do. <clears throat> He's not yet sent to a <clears throat> permanent facility, <clears throat> but keep him in prayer. But Joey understands that he's there because he disobeyed. He did things he shouldn't have done. You know, if, if you act good, I will tell children, good things happen to kids that do right, the good, good. Children, you want your life to be good? Do good. Do the things that <clears throat> you know are good and are right. And even God will reward you for that. So all of these things are in consequence of men's disobedience. You eat too much sugar, you eat too many candies and on and on, and you're going to hurt yourself. You eat too much menudo and carnitas, and, and you're going to pay the price. Hello? See, when God created man and put him on this planet, <clears throat> there was no evil. There was no evil. There was no sin. No violence. There was no sickness. There was no war. There was no greed or any of the many problems that plague us today, national and international. In the beginning, Satan <clears throat> was not the central figure, neither of man or the world. And that's why I, I don't believe in a pre-Adamic creation. Everything was existing in total submission to God. And we were teaching Wednesday night on creation of the Holy Spirit and creation. And before that, there was nothing, folks. Don't let people fool you uh, because there was nothing. You know, the evolutionist <clears throat> can never come up with the, uh, the uh, what is that, the uh, cause, the, no, no, the, um, primary cause, in other words, the first cause. Uh, because, you know, they always talk about a glob of this and a, 
ball of dust in it. But where do those things come from? Anyway, you know, especially in the case of Adam and Eve in their state of innocence, in that situation, they were totally submitted to God. <clears throat> they had nothing to fight about. If Adam would ask Eve, or Eve asked Adam, Adam, do you love me? Adam would say, who else, Eve, who else? <laughs> they had nothing to argue about. There's plenty of food, plenty of everything. They have no guilty conscience. They had, no, you know, they were in a, in a state of innocence. The corruption and the immorality and all the debauchery that we see today in the world, friends, let me tell you unequivocally, is the result of sin. Not a flaw or imperfection in God's design of his creation. The man of science tells people that we're born like that. That's not true. A teacher, I don't know where, but it was in the news this past week, was fired, dismissed from his job because <clears throat> he didn't use the right pronoun for a, a student. I don't know if it was a he or a who or a what, but anyway, uh, they fired him for that. He called the person by their name and so forth, but I don't know if it was a girl that wanted to be called a he or a boy who wanted to be called a she. But anyway, can you imagine how stupid we become There's no moral responsibility nowadays. You see, today, man is showing the results of sin. The soul of man is sick. You see, they call alcoholics sick people. They think it's a disease. You can cure it real easy. Just stop drinking. <clears throat> How many ex-winers do we have here? How many ex-drinkers? Including myself. Many of us used to imbibe the spirits. Remember that? I've been free for 48 years. The only bad spirit that I've ever entertained was Casper the Friendly Ghost in a cartoon or something. We have fabricated physiological, psychological, and sociological causes for the woes, including all addictive behavior that beset mankind. Today, there's a big preoccupation about opioids. They've been sending them by the tons from China and other places, all because of money. <clears throat> and so we have like 34 million people hooked on prescription drugs. Amen. We have created a guiltless society in which people are no longer responsible for their actions. And we have ignored sin and found either a medical or an emotional or a social phenomenon to blame for our problems. Let me tell you that a lot of these children that early in life <clears throat> They're branded with some kind of ADT, APT, whatever. All they need is a good stiff stick, in my opinion, when they're little. <clears throat> the stick will straighten anybody out. The Bible says it will save a soul from hell. But these grown-ups, these knuckleheads, never had any training on child rearing, and they think they can talk problems out of a child. The Bible says you, spoil, you spare the rod, you spare you, that's, you got it right. I'm sputtering over here. You spare the rod, you spoil the child. That's right. That's right. It'll straighten them out. I see some children and I look at them and the parents are struggling with them. I say, you know what? All they need is to just go take that boy to the bathroom, out of the restaurant, put him in the bathroom and give him a little bit of <clears throat> wisdom in the state of understanding, and <clears throat> he might just, you know. You know, my, my wife, we had to put the wooden spoon, by the way, we invented it. The wooden spoon, you know, technique. 
It came the day when my wife would just say, get the spoon. The kids would shut up and be quiet. They didn't want to go to the bathroom and get the spoon. Now you talk to our children, they'll straighten you out. Our kids are not bashful, they're not whatever. And they, we didn't ruin their psyche either. Oh, they may not be all that, you know, but they're all right. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Are you folks here? Listen, church. As Christians, we must understand the role of guilt in the plan of salvation. Without guilt, there is no conviction of sin. Without conviction of sin, there is no repentance. And without repentance, there is no forgiveness. And if there's no forgiveness, there's no salvation. <clears throat> By the tape, it'll sound the same. Someone said, it is always easier to arrive at a firm conviction about a problem after you know what the boss thinks. Calvin Coolidge said, the strength of a country is the strength of his religious convictions. That's what makes a difference in the Western world, <clears throat> is that we believe in God, is that we try to live our lives by God's instructions. We're Christians. We have no problem with other people. Yes, there's an element here in America that hasn't forgotten about the old days and this and whatever they did to them and blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> but we Christians don't because we try to live by the Bible. The Bible says love everybody. Accept everybody because God accepts everyone. And if you don't accept everyone, God won't accept you. So we're not stupid. We know what to do. But there are people that don't have the word of God. They're not Christian. And they go by what they think when they believe. And they're hating everybody. You always have those haters. Are you hearing me? They hate people they didn't even know. They never met. Are you hearing me? Come on. This troubled world seeks refuge in make-believe. It's real, they call it. In the movies, in television, in religious fads, and in drugs, and in sex. In my opinion, what most people need is not tranquilizers. What they need is good old-fashioned conviction that keeps them awake all night and makes them miserable until they get it right with God. The day I got right with God, my conscience became right. I had no fear. I didn't keep looking over my left shoulder. I didn't care who was walking behind me. <clears throat> now I'm older, of course, and so I kind of be careful. Whoa, you know, because I don't want to be surprised. And I thank God my old left hook still works a little bit. But I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. When Jesus came into my heart, all the fear and all the animosity and all of that went out the window. When I got saved, I kissed my first man. I kissed him on the cheek, of course. I just thought I'd qualify that. Are you hearing me? Surely God could have created beings incapable of sinning. People tell me, well, pastor, if God knew that Adam and Eve were going to, why didn't he just kill the devil? Well, he could have done that too. But he, thought, he, he chose to do it differently. He could have kept men from sinning by an act of his will. God's will. He could have forcibly prevented men from yielding to temptation. But then we wouldn't have free moral agency. We wouldn't have the power to choose. How many of you glad you can choose? You have to choose to come to church to be here today. And if not, I'm glad they brought you. <clears throat> Folks, I'm preaching better than you think. But anyway, are you hearing what I'm saying? You see, I mean, God have created a, a a goody goody two shoe a person that you know uh, would be eternally virtuous, but he already had angels and archangels, and he had all those beings. God wanted somebody to reflect his moral person and have free agency, free choice, you know, to choose. How many of you ladies glad that your husband chose you? Amen. 
Oh, did you choose your husband? I don't know. Sometimes the girls are way up ahead and <clears throat> they got you, they got you pegged. I was prophetic in my choice. But are you hearing what I'm saying? You wouldn't want to live with somebody that you had to. Like those Eastern marriages, arranged marriages. I wouldn't want to do that. No, 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 no. Marry for love. Well, at least like the person you're going to marry. <clears throat> I see couples out there having dinner, walking in the market. They don't look very happy to me. <clears throat> and I go, oh, my God. I wonder how it is at home. You see, if God would have intervened that way, if he would have, you know, done differently, there would be no real virtue involved in what he would do. Virtue implies a moral choice. And by eliminating choice, virtue would have not have been non-existent. Of course, God wanted men to be virtuous, so he <clears throat> allowed him freedom of choice in his life. Aren't you glad you can choose? Amen. See, you can either eat lunch or skip lunch, and you know, you won't die. You won't hurt nobody. <clears throat> You'll save some money. Hello? Are you folks here? Some of you look like you haven't gotten here yet. I'm glad. You can choose Coca-Cola or Diet Right or <clears throat> Pepsi or whatever. Isn't that great? You have choice. Some like root beer, like my wife. <clears throat> she suffers when we go to a place and they don't serve root beer. <clears throat> Hello there. I'm glad I choose to drink decaf coffee. I'm glad I can do that. The lady came to me and said, uh, dog coffee? I go, Shh, don't give me that straight stuff. Give me the decaf. Oh, it's decaf. Yeah, I said, both of us are decaf, honey. Get it right. I'm glad we can choose. <clears throat> you know, you can choose to get up in the morning or stay in bed all day. Especially if it's Saturday or Sunday and you don't work. I know some of you would have loved to have done that this morning. <clears throat> Too bad. God in making men in his likeness had to offer man a choice. The chance to partake of or refuse to partake of the forbidden fruit. Even God could not have tempered with their choice. God could not even attempt to influence men's will because he would have been out of bounds in allowing men to operate as a free moral agent. You see, if this would have happened <clears throat> where God violated men's free agency, then men at some point down the line could very well tell God, I'm sorry, I had no alternative. You influence me to act this way. I'm not responsible. But God gave us free will. You are responsible, my friend, for everything you say, you do, you talk, you say. I know people don't want to hear that. But one day the Bible says we're going to give account of everything. And really, I do want that because I want to get it over with. As even as a Christian, I'm still wondering about certain things. I was asking the Holy Spirit to forgive me this morning as I was praying because I know I've, I've, I haven't always followed his leading. I haven't always listened like I should have. I probably have grieved this heart for the things, you know, and <clears throat> maybe call my wife stupid or something. You know, we, we all fail, don't we? Yeah. If you don't fail, then... You shouldn't be here. The Bible says, whosoever, let him come. 
See, it's, everybody is, is involved. Everybody is, 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 is loved by God. Yes. And I'm glad. Here we are. Different people, different colors and different ethnicities and different. And, and yet here we are. We never had a brawl in church in 40 years of p p being a pastor. Uh, we had a couple of sisters slapping each other on the sidewalk, but <clears throat> that was after church. You know, it does happen sometimes. People get a little too excited. You know, women are kind of emotional and, and dramatic. No, I don't think it's happened. But anyway, <clears throat> are you hearing me? Thank God. You can come to church here anytime and nobody's going to attack you. Nobody's going to call you ugly or whatever. <clears throat> nobody's going to pick on you. Amen. Nobody's going to do anything to you. But just welcome you and love you. Amen. I haven't seen my cousin in years and he shows up. I welcome him just like if I saw him yesterday. Amen. George Salas is my cousin that you met the other day. He's a, he's a cement finisher too. He used to be. I don't know what he does now, but anyway. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You can come to church, whoever you are. You can bring your kids here. Your teenagers, they're not gonna be, orale. They're not gonna be. Nobody does that here no more. We don't do those things. We love each other. Hey, how you doing? We give compliments. Hey, you're looking good, sister. Well, in a nice way, I mean, <laughs> hello there. <laughs> I ran into one sister one time. I said, sister, you're looking very nice today. She goes, Pastor John. I said, I didn't mean that in a sexual way or anything like that. I'm old enough to be your papa. I don't even think in those ways anymore. <clears throat> That's a long way ago. <laughs> Are you hearing me? You see, we've got to, we get along. You do nice things for me, I do nice things for you. And, and you know, our children can come and sing their heart out and yell Merry Christmas and wonderful. And we all appreciate them and they feel good and they feel like they've done. Did you see little Solo screaming? <clears throat> I don't know who he learned that from, but anyway. He was into it. Did you see my, my, my grandson? He's got his, he's, he's got the beat. He's, He's got it there. <laughs> I'm telling you. Praise God. <clears throat> Thank God for choices. You can choose to come to this church, go to another church. You know, you, you're you not bound here. You know? Thank God for choice. Say it, say it. Thank God for choice. Today for lunch, you can have whatever you want to. If you can afford it, that's fine. Isn't it something we live in a time when you can go to uh, Winter's Nitchell and get five hot dogs for five dollars? A dollar a hot dog. If you're hungry in this country, it's because you're, you can't read signs or something. I don't know. Hello. You can go to McDonald's and get two, two sausage egg McMuffins for four dollars. Isn't that right, Brother Allen? That's right. <clears throat> Amen. Senior coffee, and you can sit there all day and they'd be feeling it all day long for you. <clears throat> That's their policy. We live in a wonderful nation, folks. We live in a wonderful country. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm thankful. I'm glad it's Christmas. I'm going to be eating good this Christmas. And you are too. And we're going to be opening presents. You give me a tie, I give you a, you know. Isn't that right? A lot of good special dishes. Oh, wonderful. This is the land that God has allowed so that you and I can enjoy it. Praise God. Let me try to finish here this morning because I'm getting hungry. Listen to me, friends. The mess that we clearly, clearly see today is not the result of a bad God, but the result of the fall. 
It was never God's intent or design to create the world as rotten as we know it today. There's only one answer, one solution to the complex problems of our world, and that is Jesus. Amen. I was listening to our, um, our legislators. They were arguing over okaying the president's request of $5 billion to continue to build that wall. Oh, and they're mad and they're not going to, and Schumer said, no way, Jose, not now, not ever. And yet they're saying, okay, to $18 billion we spend every year on helping the illegal, undocumented people that come here. $18 billion. And I could tell you other figures that would blow you away. But no, oh, they're going to fight Mr. Trump because he ran on that and they don't want him to gain another victory because that's going to better his chances for 220. Do you understand? It, it's a rebellion that's there. It's a, it's a thing that they, between Pelosi and Schumer and a couple of hard heads, pray for them that they get convicted uh, or get a heart attack or something. I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe their time is up. We need to drain the swamp somehow. <laughs> Hello there. Don't send me any dirty mail. I won't read it anyway. Only the shed blood of Jesus Christ can take away sin. You see this guy that prayed up here, cousin Gilbert? See that guy that prayed up here? Ten years, man. Yeah, that's right. And then we have Louie out there in the door. He's not here. I don't know what happened to Louie. Is he okay? Okay. Over 20 years mainlining. God saved and cleaned him up, man. You know your nephew you just met? I mean your cousin. También. También en la droga. But God set him free. You got that right, brother. Amen. See, God does great things. And thank God we have the choice to turn away from them. You know, I was a total alcoholic. If I would have kept on drinking, I would have been dead a long time ago because my liver was already rotting. But God healed me and God touched me and delivered me, set me free. Amen. And I'm going to turn 75 here pretty soon. Amen. Isn't that great? You know, Brother Randy Ponce, pastor, called me from Salinas and, hey, pastor, you know, blah, blah. And he goes, hey, pastor, by the way, how old are you? I go, well, I'm pushing 75 or... Uh, something like that I said and he and he goes really pastor seven I said yeah I says but uh, God has been good to me I'm still here I'm gonna be around here folks so get used to my preaching get used to my leadership I'm not gonna quit anytime soon I'm going to keep on working for Jesus and we're gonna see this church filled again and we're gonna see great things happening for God I'll tell you that much amen we're gonna see things you know, only the shed blood of Jesus can wash away our sin. Ultimately, man is incapable of solving his problems. They try to find solutions, but sorry, new agers, possibility thinkers, cannot find the solutions within themselves. No amount of political maneuvering, no amount of learning, culture, science, religion, not even nations uniting together will ever be able to resolve and wipe out the suffering of the innocent nor solve men's real problems. You know, there are people around the world really hurting folks. There's people starving to death and dying in these camps, uh, refugee camps all over the world. <clears throat> Mr. Putin is developing supposedly super uh, weapons, but he's starving the people in Russia. They can hardly, they, I think they live on vodka and, and snow or something like that. I'm telling you, it's, it's sad. All over the place. Look at Mexico. Mexico should take pride in themselves and say, right on, we're going to fix this problem. We're going to take care of these people here. Tijuana's got more money, but a lot of it is from the drugs and all that mess that they, they do, all that wicked living. But they could do something. When I lived in Tijuana, it was 175,000 people. Now it's over 3 million people. 
and is richer than ever and millions and billions and billions of dollars go through that border every year. And Mexico would have said, right on, we're going we're gonna to let the world know that we Mexicans have pride in ourselves and we're going to take care of this problem. No, on the contrary, they're just adding to the problem and trying to push them over the border so that we can end up with their mess. God help us. Pray about that. Don't vote me in. I'm not running for office. <laughs> Only the blood of Jesus cleanses from sin our filthy hearts. Yes. Only he can transform them into the creatures he created them to be. I'm going to quit there because, you know, I could go on, but I'm not going to go on. But I want to tell you something, that this world is not the world that God intended for us to live in. But I got good news, and I want to end up on a good news because, listen, there's coming a new world in with reign of righteousness. Jesus went to prepare it, to build it, and he's going to come back, and he's going to take us with him out of this mess. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a good clap. I praise this morning. He's going to take us out. He's going to take us out. I know people call the rapture escapist mentality, but they're cuckoo. Listen, I'm ready. This world is a wilderness. This world is not my home. This world doesn't have what I want, what I need, what I envision, what I dream about. Hallelujah. I'm going. Heaven is my home. That's where I'm going. Father Abraham looked for a city whose maker and builder was God. The city of God. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place where I am. There you may be also. Oh, Holy Spirit, help us to continue to be faithful to God and continue to live this life and continue to tell people that Jesus saves, Jesus delivers, and Jesus heals, and Jesus is coming back one of these days. Please stand to your feet. Come on. I'm through preaching. I'm through preaching this morning. Come on. Stand to your feet. I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes. I want to pray for everyone this morning that is not happy in this world anymore because of all the problems that are in it. I want to pray for those that can envision a better world to come. Oh, hallelujah. As you close your eyes and bow your heads, let me see your hands. You believe there's a new world coming. You want to be a part of that. Praise God. I want to pray for you. Father in heaven, I thank you and I praise you and I take this moment to pray for your people. I come, dear God, in the name of Jesus, Father God, to pray that everyone here would be able to continue and be faithful and stand firm until the day when the trumpet blows, when the trumpet sounds, when you come back to pick us up, God. Help us meanwhile to give to others the hope, the message, the gospel in the name of Jesus. Awaken those that are sleeping among the dead, Lord, and give them light. And let him rise up to be evangelists in this hour to spread the message that Jesus saved, that Jesus loves us, and that he is coming back. Thank you again for this morning. Thank you for these children that sang. Lord, let them grow up to be men and women of God. And thank you for all your blessings. Guide us, direct us, lead us, enable us, we pray. And we'll give you all the glory and the praise. And all the God's people said, Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's sing before we leave this place. Come on. Come on. Sing with us. <clears throat> Hallelujah.
together. Let every heart be convinced that Jesus is the answer. Lord, keep your hand upon every one of us. Help us to be drawn closer to you and help us to say yes to Jesus every step of the way, every day, and we'll give you glory for it all. Thank you for this morning, Lord. Thank you for your goodness and your mercies and your love. Thank you for everyone that came. We give you praise. We thank you now to be with us and bring us back this evening at 6 o'clock for a wonderful celebration, Lord of Christmas. We love you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, all the God's people say amen and amen. Come on. Hallelujah. You know, you know, during Christmas, you know, we recognize people, right? Don't go yet. Don't go yet. Don't go yet, brother. Anyway, there's a lady around here that is not seen up in front. <clears throat> and the Lord reminded me that we needed to recognize her. And this lady works in every area of our church ministry. And during Christmas, she wasn't up here, but she was she's in charge of all the toys, separates them by age and everything else. And she does this every year, never says a thing, never asks for nothing. I want Sister Rosa Medina to come. Come on, Rosa. <clears throat> and we got some little flowers and a little card for you. And we want to tell you we love you, Rosa. You're a special person. Yes. Woo, woo, woo. <clears throat> Very special lady. And uh, we love her very much. We love Pablo too, but Rosa, it's a way. Amen. Love you folks. Be kind to each other. Loving. See. Just that it. this is the church. It's not just me. I, I've known this forever. That's why I don't even want to say anything. But I do want to thank you. It's you who bring the toys. You who bring the food. You who do the work. It's all together. It's all of us, not just me. And you too, Pastor, for teaching us. And Sister Kathy for putting up with me. And we know that. But she does the work. And that's, that's important. Love one another, be friends with one another. Don't forget to invite somebody. Bring somebody with you tonight. If you never come back on a Sunday night, why don't you make it a change and come back tonight, okay? We love you, folks. Go with God. He'll go with you. If you need prayer, don't leave the church. We'll pray for you. We'll, we thank God for you.